uh, to be here at the same workshop in uh, Tunis. I'm fairly new to the field of regional frequency analysis, and I will present some uh, fairly simple discussion, actually. Uh, it's not on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, so it's a fairly simple discussion. I, I, I'm not going to use it. Okay. No, I'm not going to use it. Okay. You cannot hear me? I don't know, but I'm in the first line. <laughs> 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 Is it better? Okay. Yeah. So it's a discussion on the sources of variability that occurs in regional frequency analysis, and this is joint work with my colleague Luc Nefel, who couldn't make it to the workshop. So just to set up the framework, uh, we heard already a lot about regional frequency analysis, but uh, this is uh, just to fix the ideas. So let's say we want to perform regional frequency analysis in Montpellier, which is the city where I live. It's just right here in the south of France. So just to give an idea of the surrounding, this is the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean and Spain, and we have a bunch of stations which are the blue dots. And we fix a neighborhood which is a circle, the green line here, which has 30 kilometers of radius. And we're going to use the information over there to do the analysis. So, uh, just for the notation, we're going to have all the stations S1 to AC that are within the neighborhood. We have uh, the observations are the annual maxima of rainfall, I call them X. So we have a bunch of observations for each station. We need to compute the index values, which is just the average of the maximum rainfall for each station, so it is mi. And we're going to work on the normalized data, which are the observations normalized by the index value, and uh, those normalized uh, data, I call them y. So now we can build the original sample, which is made of this normalized data, for all the stations I have in my neighborhood. So I'm going to work with this sample. So I have a number of uh, assumptions I'm going to work with. We already talked about the homogeneity assumption. So basically, we assume that all the observations in the regional sample are independent and they have the same distribution. Moreover, I'm going to use the assumption that my normalized data is distributed according to a generalized GIF generalized extreme value distribution, the GF, which has three parameters, mu r, sigma r, and the shape index uh, zr, so location and scale before. By construction, we have that the expectation, if it, is, if it exists, is going to be equal to 1. And uh, this entails that uh, the uh, unnormalized data, the xi, will follow a GF distribution, but with the location and scale that are multiplied by the index value of the station. So uh, I'm going to have to, I will perform special declustering to make sure my, uh, my data is as independent as possible in my neighborhood. I'm going to have to estimate, if I don't have any observation, the index value to get my normalized data. And uh, I'm going to take the annual maxima of the hydrological year to make sure my data assumption makes sense. OK, now, uh, in this context, we will study the sources of variability. First of all, uh, we thought to look at the importance of the choice of the neighborhood to make sure that the uh, ID assumption uh, holds. Second, uh, we look at the variance of the L moment estimate for the parameter of the gap. And third, uh, we look at the variability introduced by the interpolation of the index value when we are looking at unvoked sites or sites for which we pretend we don't have observations. So, so this is just to illustrate uh, what I just talked about, the sources of variability. So this is the quantile curve. You have the return period. Here the quantile value. This is for Montpellier again. The red dots are the observations. The red line is the local estimate. The green line is local regional, by which I mean that the index value is estimated locally. The blue line is the uh, pure regional, by which I mean that the index value is interpolated. So we see that there's uh, some variability introduced because we choose a neighborhood. Also, there's a, a not so much drift because we interpolate the index value. And this gray band here is a confidence interval around the local estimate, which I built uh, yeah, by bootstrap, I'm going to explain later. So in this case, we, know, we see that 
all uh, or choices, uh, all the variability of the choice of neighborhood and, and population are within the variance of uh, the L moment estimator. I'll come back to that. So uh, in our uh, framework, we have in the set of friends where the map I've shown you, for the calibration data, we have 600 and stations, 609, with between 2 and 34 <coughs> And for the validation set, we have 411 stations with between 46 and 58 maxima. So we will consider that for the validation data, we have enough observations so that the local uh, estimate is reliable. So our goal will be to compute the regional estimate with various methods for each uh, validation station. And we compare this estimate in various ways with the local estimate, which we assume is uh, quite reliable. So first source of variability, the choice of neighborhood. We have five possibilities. The first one is to pick a homogeneous circular neighborhood. So we choose the radius so that it satisfies, it fulfills the homogeneity test of Hoskin and Wallace and Anderson Darling. The second possibility is just to fix the threshold, uh, fix the radius at 50 kilometers. So we have a circle of 50 kilometers for every station. The third neighborhood is uh, to use a fixed regional sample size. So we take the circle to be large enough so that we have at least 100 observations. The fourth uh, neighborhood is just a random radius. So I pick a radius at random between 10 and 50 kilometers. And the last one is a benchmark. I take 10 stations at random among the calibration set. So this is the size of neighborhood I get when I have to choose <coughs> with the homogeneous neighborhood, it varies from uh, about five kilometers to 55. And we have a few things that do not appear to make sense. For instance, in the Alps, we have a lot of 50 kilometer neighborhood. So we're not uh, so happy with that. <coughs> On the other hand, if I choose the size of the neighborhood to be large enough to have 100 observations, so this is the radius, it's the same scale, and we have much smaller neighborhood and we don't have so many uh, red dots. For instance, I have some over here, but this is because I'm just at the edge. On, on one side, I have the ocean. On the other side, I have Spain. So I have a large circle over here. So uh, globally, the, the second way to choose makes, makes more sense. The other one is just a fix so I'm not going to show you. Here I'm showing the local quantile estimates because this, gonna, this is going to be the reference. And after that, I'm just going to speak a relative quantile error. So this is for the level 99%, so it ranges from 100 to 400. And uh, we can see the phenomenon that is typical in the area that is very high control over these, the, the summit of this mountain range. And this is because the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea brings a lot of humid air and it triggers high precipitation over here. So this is typical of all control levels. So now I uh, can compare the method with the relative control error. So what it is, is just the regional quantile divided by the local quantile. And I think one minus this. So when we have zero, it means we have a perfect match. The regional estimate is as good as the local estimate. When it's positive, it means that the regional quantile underestimates the local quantile. And when it's negative, it's the reverse. So this is what it looks like. Uh, these are the <coughs> facts of the quantile level 90%. For the five types of neighborhoods, so this is homogeneous, 50 kilometers, 100 uh, observations, random size, and random neighbors. So what we can see here is that uh, homogeneous neighborhoods seems to be a bit less biased <coughs> than 50 kilometers, but the other one are not so biased. But of course, we have more variability for the random type of neighborhood. And this pattern is going to hold for the other quantile level. But what we're going to see appearing is that even for the homogeneous method, although it's always non-biased, we have sometimes outliers, which means that the neighborhood was badly defined for those stations. So as we increase, we see the same thing. And so these were some outliers and uh, not a variability for these methods. And that's so bad for this one. So uh, now we looked at the special organization of the error. I did this map for all quantile levels and for all types of neighborhood, but I'm just showing one because as far as we could see, we did not perform any tests, but there was no special organization of the error, nothing special occurring on the mountains or, or anything like that. 
So now what we did is we checked the variability of the choice and neighborhood against the variance of the L moment estimator. We did that by uh, using bootstrap, bootstrap presampling. I, I draw a thousand bootstrap duplicates of uh, the series of observations at each validation data, uh, validation site. And I computed the L moment log of data estimates for each sample. And from these, I could get an empirical distribution for any quantile level. And then from this, uh, get a 95% confidence interval. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to check whether the regional estimate falls within this, this confidence interval. So this is, again, the example I've shown you at the beginning. So the, this 95% confidence interval is for a critical level of 100. I have 100 estimates, 1,000, sorry, estimates of my quantile. And I'm just checking the 95% interval. And if everything falls within this interval, I assume I'm, I'm uh, doing a good computation, a good regional analysis. So now this is a summary of uh, what's happening with the confidence, the local confidence interval. I'm looking at different quantile level, 90%, 95, 98, 99. And this is the different type of neighborhood. So this means that for, for the quantile level 90%, when I perform regional frequency analysis, with the homogeneous neighborhood, 90, for 97% of the station in the validation set, I fall within the confidence interval of the local estimator. So it means here we're pretty good. Of course, uh, this percentage of, of correctness as it decreases as the quantile level increases. And what we can, the, other, the other thing which is noticeable is that even if we're doing <coughs> really something without any knowledge, like we take random stations, and I look at the highest quantile, which is the the more difficult to estimate, I get that three times out of four, I'm within the confidence interval. So that, that's a bit <laughs> worrisome. So I just highlighted the, this uh, method for choosing the neighborhood because this is the best one, so it's the method with the 100 observations in the original sample. I'm going to use that later. So this is the first conclusion that we reach that I want to highlight, that the variability, the variability introduced by the choice of neighborhood is small compared to the variance of the l moment estimator. So it's not worth spending too much time choosing properly the neighborhood. So now I'm going to look at the variability introduced by the interpolation of the index value. We consider six types of uh, regressor or interpolator. First, linear regression, then linear regression plus kernel smoothing of the residu residuals. Third, linear regression plus cridging. Then we consider uh, nonlinear and nonparametric regression, which is the multilayer construction, or I call it NLP, but it's also known as a neural network. Then we have NLP plus kernel smoothing mm -hmm. and NLP plus cridging. So this is a QQ plot on the validation set. This is uh, the interpolation, and this is the local estimation. So we see that if we do just use the linear, we have this uh, trend here, and we underestimate the high index values. And then if we use uh, smoothing or cridging, it does a bit better. And we have a bit the same thing with the NLP. Uh, it, it, it tends to correct for this underestimation of large index values. If I summarize this in this table, <coughs> this is the root mean square error for the six methods. And we see that the best one is the linear decimal thing. So I'm going to go on with this in my comparisons. So this is, again, the relative quantile error. And here I'm just comparing the local regional, so with local estimation of the index values, with the pure regional where I have interpolation. And as expected, we have a lot more variability when we have to interpolate the index value. I'm not showing the other quantile level because it's, it's the same picture. So uh, this is again uh, the number, the percentage of stations that fall within the local confidence interval for values level. And this is to compare the local regional, so local estimation of index value with interpolation of index value. And here we can see that by interpolating the index value, we take a big drop. So we're losing in, in accuracy. We, it drops to 66 and, 60 and 70 for the lower quantiles that we consider. So that's the second conclusion that we reach, that the variability introduced by the interpolation of the index values is large 
compared to the variance of the allowance estimator. So more uh, efforts must be focused on this, must focus on this. So we came up with a classification of the estimates to, in order to identify whether the problem was with the original estimation or with the interpolation. So it's again based, based on the local confidence intervals. And we define that the original guess is doing good if the shape parameter of the original distribution is within the 95% confidence interval of the local estimate. And similarly for the index value, we say it's good if the index value interpolated is within the 95% confidence interval of the local estimate. So it's all by bootstrap. So we have that uh, the original guess is good 88% of for 88% of the stations, whereas in the value is good just for 62% of the stations. So this is uh, this correspond a bit to uh, the quantile that we had before for the local regional law, uh, for the local regional analysis. When we look at higher quantiles, we have a similar score, and we think because in this case, what matters most is when the index value is uh, sorry the uh, shape parameter is well estimated because that's what matters the most for more extreme quantiles, whereas the uh, index value interpolation matter the most for lower quantiles, and this corresponds to the pure regional estimate for lower quantiles. So this is just a... Uh, now look at this. I'm going to show example now of the classification to show you that it makes sense. So here we have good regional get and good interpolated in the index value. Uh, again, this is the local law. And this is pure regional and uh, sorry, local regional and pure regional. And we see that we have the good shape. And then this value doesn't drift too far apart from the local one. Here we have good regional give and bad interpolated index value. So we see that the green and blue curve have the same shape as the red, but the blue one is drifted from the other one. And uh, this is bad regional give and good index value. So the shape is wrong, but the index value is pretty good. But we wouldn't really be happy with that analysis. And finally, bad regional gap estimation and bad index value interpolation. So the shape is kind of bonded, whereas the local one goes upward, and we have a big drift. So the general conclusions. We think that the homogeneous neighborhood tends to reduce the bias of the estimation, but we have the problem that we have the outliers, so sometimes it's performing really not good enough. And it might be, we think it might be because the power of the homogeneity test is not high enough. That is, it's not going to reject the hypothesis of homogeneity where it should. Uh, third, for our uh, data, we think the 100 observations original sample is pretty good, but we are aware it depends on sampling. Four, we didn't detect any special organization of the error. Finally, when we look at the variability of L moments, that's what is more important than the uncertainty, uncertainty in the choice of neighborhood. And when we look at the interpolation of the index value, it affects mainly the first extreme quantile, so 90%, 95%. And this is what we should focus on, especially to improve on the lower quantiles. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> that rely on similarity measures, you know, basically relying on uh, geographic distance in the definition of yeah. all your neighborhoods. Uh, that was the initial choice. I actually checked a number of other uh, definitions of neighborhood with uh, what we call uh, the walker distance, walking distance, when we have to climb the hill to consider the altitude between two stations. And I consider uh, geographic distance with climatic cohorts. I, I tried a bunch of stuff and I couldn't see any difference with the my performance. So now I just presented uh, neighborhood based on uh, uh, the, pre the possible presence of cross correlation among the series, but because if co cross correlation is present, classical tests like Oskin and Wallis uh, provide uh, misleading information. Another thing I wanted to uh, ask you if you tried among climatic variables also mean annual precipitation because in many regions of the world mean annual <coughs> precipitation uh, could be a, a good way to define homogeneous pooling group of sites uh, uh, independently of geographic uh, location. I haven't tried the mean average precipitation. Uh, I, I, I will look into that. Uh, 
Um, and I heard about it before, but we haven't tried that yet. Um, and regarding the other question, I have to say that the problem we had with the homogeneity testing is if we had to run it, run them in batch, so it was difficult to look at them individually. But what I realized, what I what I realized is that is that when I run them twice, I don't get the same size of neighborhood. So that's why I thought maybe in some cases it's not uh, powerful enough. And uh, regarding the cross correlation. Uh, I'm not sure I understand uh, well the questions, but uh, what we did is we tried to remove the special dependencies. So every, like if I have many stations in my neighborhood, if ever the maxima occur on the same day, I take just the largest to make sure I don't have those problems. That's what <coughs> I mean. 